Oh no, I hope I don't fall. This bike was initially a 2018 Suron X. I got it used from Lunacycle in 2019. That's why it's red, they used to come in color, now they just come in black. And uh, these are the modifications that I've done to it. Yeah, I'm on my own. I don't need no one. I don't, I don't, yeah. To keep it organized, I'm gonna break it down into three categories. Safety mods, hardware mods, and performance mods. I won't be listing them in order of when I installed them, it's just uh, pretty random. Starting with safety mods, I put a sound alarm right there. That makes a loud beeping noise if somebody touches the bike when I leave it. Another safety mod is a wireless GPS tracker from Invoxia. It is somewhere on the bike that I will not disclose, but it tracks the bike and it sends me notifications whenever the bike is touched. Peep the description for discount code for that tracker. For night riding safety, I installed this underglow light kit from Sir on Pit Stop. They should be back in stock soon. Go ahead and follow at Surround Pit Stop on Instagram if you're interested in picking one of these up. It looks really nice and bright at night and you can change the colors and you can make it strobe or fade between colors. I installed this handlebar mirror, really great for uh, not having to turn your head around all the time. And the last safety mod is more of an anti-safety mod. I just took off the headlight, it gets in the way of my wheelies. Probably not the safest thing to do, but I also think it looks kind of good. A little headlight delete. Now moving on to hardware. I've got a 42 tooth aftermarket sprocket from Warp 9, and I painted the bolts red. I think it looks pretty sick. I run a 42 tooth sprocket on 17 inch supermoto wheels. That's the exact same gear ratio that you'll find on the stock Suron with the 48 tooth sprocket and the 19 inch wheels. I really don't think you need to upgrade the sprocket. I know people talk about getting a bigger sprocket for wheelies. You get more torque from it. I do not think that's necessary. I would just stick with the 42 tooth sprocket. I'm also running a peg spacer from Suron Shop. Check out my discount code below to get a spacer like this. It's really important anytime you tip the bike, the peg mount, this triangle piece is gonna bend. Uh, but with the peg spacer, you can tip the bike and you will not have to replace that peg mount. Also from Suron Shop, I'm rocking their steel bash guard. Definitely recommend getting a more robust bash guard like this if you do a, a lot of off-roading. Even just street riding, I dented the stock bash guard, so this one from Suron Shop's a great mod. Much heavier and ro more robust than the stock one. And sometimes it's the little things. I upgraded the nut holding the rear axle in. This is actually 10 millimeter axle. I think the stock one is nine millimeters and it's made out of some more robust steel. Uh, I just picked this up from a hardware shop. The reason I upgraded this bolt in particular is because after taking the wheel on and off a bunch of times, that nut is going to get balded and it's going to get to a point where you can't take it off. So I thought I would replace it before that happened. Got this direct stem mount. Really nice if you ever tip the bike, your handlebars stay straight. And I think it looks pretty cool. Also added some spacers to fill up the stem. and I throw on some domino grips for the aesthetic. And the last hardware mod, again, attention to detail, little red valve caps, I think they look good. Now for the performance upgrades, I'll start with the front brake rotor. This is a Magura floating front rotor. I made a video on this. Pretty good, I'd recommend it, it's light. It's got good heat dissipation. Speaking of brakes, I upgraded the brakes both front and rear with Magura MT5s. And I spray painted the little ring this red. Definitely one of my highest recommended modifications right here, the Magura MT5. The Magura MT7 are also great, they're just more expensive and you can get the Magura MT5 e-brakes that have an extra wire you can connect to your brake light. Upgraded the throttle from the stock throttle to this Magura electric throttle that I got from Lunacycle. I also made a video on this. One of the biggest mods was definitely the Supermoto wheel set from Wicked Wheel Works. This is a custom 17 inch Supermoto set. I love the red front hub. And uh, these definitely improve your riding on pavement. They increase your grip. 
You don't really notice any difference in terms of your top speed or torque. These are mostly grip uh, and efficiency improvements. He sent them with the same tires that come on the Lunacycle Supermoto kit. And since I got them, I've worn through the rear tire and I've replaced it with a Michelin Pilot Street tire. And again, all the links are down below. Threw some three inch riser bars on there. These are DAD high side 31.8. They were by far the most noticeable modification I made before the battery and the controller. By far, these totally change your riding position for the better and they make wheelies easier. Threw some pegs on there too. These are also from Warp 9. Highly recommend these, very well made, and they are plug and play for the Suron. The stock pegs are probably the worst part of the Suron when it comes out of the box. They're absolutely useless. I would say pegs and handlebars should be your very first modifications. Now for the biggest two, we're looking at the battery and the controller. This is a 72 volt, 32 amp hour battery from Lightspeed. And a BAC 4000 controller from Emoto Bros. With the battery and controller mods, it's no longer really a Suron, it's more of a DIY Super Emoto. This thing goes about 80 miles an hour. It's got incredible torque. It's got much more range total beast with these modifications. I have to recommend them, but I would not recommend them if you're new. So I forgot to mention this uh, when I was filming, so I'm just gonna say it now. Um, if you want a bigger battery, you do not need a BAC 4000 controller. You can just get another 60 volt battery that has more amp hours and you'll get more range out of it. If you wanna start running more power and get a higher top speed, like my bike, then you need a 72 volt battery which has to be used with a aftermarket controller like the BAC 4000. Uh, there's also some companies that offer the BAC 8000. I would not recommend it. The BAC 4000 already has enough power to melt the motor. Getting the 8000 is not gonna do too much for you. It might get you a little more efficiency because it's better at heat dissipation. And the Emoto Bros controller comes with this egg rider display. It's small, but it's got all the info you need on it. And you've got nine power modes. I've got my mode 9 tuned for 13 kilowatts at maximum speed 65 miles an hour and I'm only ever really riding in mode 5 because mode 5 is like 20% stronger than the stock so I think it's the perfect amount but um, the Emoto Bros controller gives you a lot of adjustability with your power and you can change the uh, roll off regen braking. I've got my regen braking pretty high, so it ends up doing like most of the wheelie for me just by braking when I roll off the throttle. All said and done, without sponsors, I would have spent about $7,000 on this bike. Moving forward, I'd love to replace the suspension. I'd like to get a new rear shock and new front forks. Both of these are stock on the 2019 models. I've got the RST Killer up front and the Fast Ace in the back. And in the process of replacing the front fork, I'd like to put a new headset in there. I've got a Cane Creek uh, just waiting for that. Ever since I got the bike, the headset's been incredibly loose. So there you go. Those are the over 20 mods that I've done to the Suron. It's 80 mile per hour. Total beast. Absolute pleasure to ride. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. And stay tuned. Yeah.